Hey everyone, good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Complair. Episodes, is it nine? Yeah, it's nine. Nine weeks. Nine weeks of this uh, little project. Um, uh, once again, thank you for all the, for all the messages. Um, pretty much, as I said last week, uh, same thing pretty much uh, every, every day, really. Um, there's messages like uh, congrat congratulating the show and uh, you know uh, asking some questions as well. Um, so thanks uh, once again for all the support. Um, if you know I'm doing this for you again, as I said, so um, it's it's good to know that it's being well received. Um, let's start with the overall intro. We have a great show for you today, by the way. And um, we what happened this week. Ah, so probably some of you know uh, or read my interview uh, within Ben uh, Ben McEwan um, newsletter. Uh, so it was fun. Thank you, Ben, once again for reaching out. Um, ben was um, just to remind everyone. Ben was a guest on the show. I believe it was a couple of weeks ago, um, or is it? No, it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, and um, more than that, actually, I think it was three weeks ago. And then. Um, he, he, he basically asked me to to be uh, his guest on his uh, type of show, which is the newsletter that all of you should subscribe uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, there's al always always great uh, information there, um, despite the, uh, of the fact that you might know some of our, some of the concepts already. That doesn't matter uh, really. It's it's all about like uh, sharing information with everyone, and this is also what I'm trying to do here to. Um, you know the best way I can basically uh, so check that interview um, if you want it's uh, it's available online I believe I've put it also on the discord channel so you can go there and um, and um, and check it out uh, pandemic update um, not very good things uh, this week uh, as um, as you probably notice uh, around the world um, with more focus um, on maybe UK and um, and the US um, this is on the human side of things so the cases are rising again uh, which was or somewhat like expected um, given the fact that the lockdown has been lifted but at the same time people are not behaving as they should so um, you know not the best of the situations really um, as I said uh, a couple of weeks, weeks ago and last week as well I've been uh, I've been spending these couple of uh, weeks in Lisbon I'm still in Lisbon by the way I'm in a friend's house thanks Salome for borrowing me your house um, hope you see this uh, one one day um, one of these days and um, so uh, the case is here even though people are behaving um, quite rationally and quite, I would say, responsibly, the cases are rising here again. And it's actually, uh, even though, um, you know, at least in, within Europe, uh, Portugal was actually an example on how, you know, the vir virus has been contained. Um, it's actually now the second worst country in terms of cases rising again. So, you know, um, not the best of the situations in any in any country, uh, but uh, things in the UK uh, and the US especially are dramatic. Um, so we'll see what happens. In terms of what's happening in our industry, things are not looking the best either. Uh, every week there's something new, and uh, we've all read the well, what's happening with the Technicolor situation. Um, we'll see this is not really well it's news but we, we we we've been reading about this situation for for maybe or almost a year or something um, but um, yeah the situation is not looking too good um, apparently uh, NPC is also which is something that you know counterbalances what I just said but it seems like they're opening a, a new branch in um, in Germany not sure if it's Berlin actually. Uh, so 
you know, um, there's s certain movements, but I don't think um, things are looking really good, unfortunately. Um, and let's not forget that the risk of a second wave is uh, of infection is real. And um, I don't want to, of course, alarm anyone, but it seems like the governments of several countries are not taking this seriously. Um, and it seems like even though, and this is also supported by the WHO, which um, they've been saying, or they said in the past, that the second wave is unlikely, but that doesn't seem what the data is suggesting at the moment. So I think there's a real, uh, what am I to say? Of course, I'm not a scientist, but when am I to say um, what's, what will happen? I, I think nobody knows, actually. Uh, that's why everybody's throwing, you know, random things, um, hoping that they will get some of these things right. But uh, I don't think things look too good, to be honest. And I think uh, from what the data is suggesting, at, at least, uh, a second wave is, is I think it's, it's really likely to happen. Um, what else? Uh, in the UK, pubs are going to be open from either the 6th or the 7th of July. So it's in the, within a couple of weeks or something. Um, and as far as I read, there's no masks being uh, mandatory uh, in terms of um, people should wear the masks all the time, e even if they go to the pub. Um, uh, the so social distancing uh, is also reducing from, I think it's uh, one meter plus. I think that's how they describe it. Uh, which I think also in itself it's a bit uh, irresponsible or uh, not irresponsible, that's not what I meant, sorry. It's a bit dubious about what that means. Uh, one plus meter, I think it's a bit dubious and a lot of people from the beginning, at least on the British side of things, uh, have been criticizing the, the fact that the messages are not super clear and that uh, of course can be, can be, can be a problem. Uh, hopefully everything is going to be fine. But um, yeah, we, we are seeing and uh, we are witnessing what's happening in the world. So we can take, um, you know, some predicaments out of that, I, I, I believe, but we'll see what happens. Um, and this is, I guess, where we at in terms of the pandemic. Uh, by the way, in terms of the pandemic situation and the cases rising and all that stuff, uh, some countries around the world, especially in Europe, are, you know, putting some some measures of lockdown not not lockdown as it was at least not for now but they're doing that so and the portuguese government is not an exception uh, the prime minister already said if people don't behave everybody will go home again uh, and i think honestly given what i'm seeing even though people are in some parts of the city are behaving responsibly there are other situations in which no one is wearing a mask for example in parks and stuff like that which is a bit weird but um, hopefully everything's going to be fine. But I think there's uh, some, some concern here, I believe. Uh, technical uh, highlight of the week. Uh, today I've selected something that it's not new at all. I think this is from, this says maybe around four or five years. <laughs> so it's not new at all. But uh, I found it refreshing in terms of um, uh, how to... Uh, this is basically, it's, it's, it's a YouTube channel. I said a few weeks ago that um, I don't follow many YouTube channels, um, but with a few exceptions. This is one of the exceptions. It's a site called Computer File, a site, no, um, a channel called Computer File. And it's uh, basically a way that they have to um, explain how um, filters work, uh, namely different uh, blur filters. Uh, so I think it's a refreshing, uh, probably to some of you, uh, you know, a more graphical and tangent, tangent way of, of seeing things. So hopefully that will, um, that will, uh, you'll find that beneficial. And uh, I'll, I'll be putting the, the link in the description as always and on the Discord channel as well. And, um, and I believe that's it for the technical highlights for today. Let's see what's happening on the chat. Uh, hello everyone again. Uh, we have a few people, new people here. Uh, welcome everyone. Ah, Giacomo is here. Nice to see you, Giacomo. And uh, our moderator, of course, uh, Sabine, always here. Thank you, Sabine. <laughs> uh, you guys should behave because she, she can kick you out now. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. She can, by the way, but she won't because um, there's no, there hasn't been any problems so far. Um, 
What, uh, what are you saying, Sabine? It's still better uh, to be a bit more cautious than sorry afterwards. Yes, better safe than sorry, right? I, I guess you're right. Um, we'll see what happens, but I don't think the situation looks amazing. Uh, I hope I'm wrong, as I said. I hope I'm wrong. I really do. But um, I don't think the situation um, is, is like there's like light at the end of the tunnel in terms of uh, how things will turn out for the best in, in the very short period of time. I don't think that's the case. Uh, but again, I hope, um, I don't think I'm wrong, but I hope I'm wrong. Uh, we'll see what happens. All right. So we have a great show for you today. Let's go to the technical highlights. Um, uh, sorry, the tech corner, by the way. I, and again, I'm, I know that I'm going to repeat myself. If you have sp specific things that you would like me to focus on the tech corner, please write me an email or uh, a direct message or something like that. There's been some people that have been doing that uh, already. So keep coming, keep them coming. Uh, I haven't been able, I haven't so far been able to uh, address those uh, situations, but I will, I promise I will. Uh, but yes, that's, that's exactly my, my intention is to have this dialogue between uh, me and, and whoever is watching. Um, and this is the premise of the show anyway. So let's take a look at the tech corner for today. And then we're going to take, uh, we're going to talk a little bit afterwards and then introduce our guest. All right. Okay, take corner now. See you in two seconds. So normals, it's one of those concepts that uh, a lot of people use them. Um, even people with a lot of experience, they use them uh, and they use them proficiently with no problems and they know how and when to apply them. But uh, from my experience, people don't really understand what normals are and what they can do for them uh, in terms of coming up with different solutions for certain uh, situations or certain types of problems. And because they don't understand it, they don't know how to tackle certain problems. And maybe if they would understand normals a bit better, they'll be able to tackle and to untangle themselves a bit better from certain problems. So let's talk about what normals really are. So in this situation, as an example, I have a sphere that is textured with a certain texture. It doesn't really matter. And um, if we go on the 3D scene, I put some, um, you know, vertical lines coming from the center of our sphere. And um, this will be the actual thing to illustrate what normals are. So a normal is a vector. And I'm not getting into what a vector is at the moment because it goes outside the scope of what I'm trying to explain to you here. But it's a vector that it's perpendicular to the surface within the point you selected on that surface. So for example, this guy here is perpendicular to the actual surface of the point you've selected. The word perpendicular or normal, it's the same. That means that it makes 90 degrees with that surface. So this angle here, it's 90 degrees. And because this is a surface, there will be a really big number of these normals around the sphere because every single point you select, in this case, because it's a graphical uh, representation, every single pixel will have its own normal. Okay, so this is the representation of what a normal is in the 3D space. If you understood what I just said, that's another way to say that the direction of that face will also be defined by the actual normal of that surface. So this will help us in a lot of different situations if you understand this concept. Now we're going to take a look at what's the graphical representation of a normal. So if I now shuffle the normal from the 3D scene, we're going to have this representation. And this is a mix of RGB colors. And uh, again, although people use this to normally do real lights, because of course we know that if we go around the channels, we will hit different parts of the uh, sphere uh, and we can use them as masks to uh, relight our subject. It's very useful to understand what these colors are. Okay, so first of all, let's establish one thing that is super important, which is the normal normals in a graphical representation, they go always between minus one and one. That's how they, they behave numbers wise. If you look at the, the numbers here, if you select any point here, you'll see that 
there is no point going above one no matter where you place the sphere or how big the sphere is or whatever and uh, what's important to retain here is the reason why we have different colors it's because it's coordinates of each vector that comes out from that surface given a certain point that you selected okay let's say that i've selected this point here normals wise this will be a vertical thing like this this will be our n vector that's the notation and there will be a certain contribution every single axis in which this vector is coming out of so how can this vector be defined in space in order to, for us to define that we have to have a cartesian reference and the cartesian reference is going to be something like this okay x y and z and this cartesian reference it's placed in the center of our world normals if not described otherwise it's always referred to the world position and by world position what i mean by this is if you go to your 3d world you can see that this sphere because it was created like that is right at the center of our world and that's why when we look at this this cartesian is at the center of our world which coincides in this case only with the center of our sphere as well but the sphere can go around the world anyway but the cartesian reference will always be placed at the center of our world there will be other types of normals for example normals refer to the camera space and there will be something different but let's not mix that concept yet but it's basically a different reference to which we are referring our normals to in this case it's world and unless it's specified differently it's always against the world that we need to define that same normal so in this case here if we have something like this we need to define that same vector in terms of what's the contribution of every single axis in our Cartesian reference. Although I just said that we're not going to get into what a vector is, there's a couple of things that it's important to establish for your better comprehension on the following example, which is a vector is composed by two components. Uh, one of them is the magnitude, which is the same thing as saying length, and the other one is direction. It's actually the direction that we care about in this example. And knowing that, it's possible to place the same vector anywhere where we want in space as long as it respects these two components the vector is still valid for the calculations that you want to do with it for example in this case i could have placed this vector anywhere in space as long as it respects the actual same length and the same direction in this case it's not even respecting the same length of course it's just hand drawing but we can see that this one is shorter than this one so of course th these two couldn't be equivalent but let's assume that they have exactly the same direction and for the following example direction is actually all we care about even though i'm choosing this one to illustrate the following examples bear in mind that a vector can be placed anywhere in space so when i'm taking coordinates from this vector the same coordinates could have been taken from anywhere in space but the relationship within them within these three axes they will always have the same level of contribution between them to define the direction of this vector and again direction is all we care about in this example so we have our Cartesian reference that means that this vector can be defined with a certain contribution of probably every single axis why because here we can say that we have a contribution on y of a certain value and we have also a contribution on on the x with a certain value as well and maybe even though we cannot see this flat representation of a 3d point maybe we will have something or some contribution from the z-axis that is coming towards us there's probably a certain angle in which this certain vector has towards us uh, of course again with this 2d representation we cannot see it but maybe there's some so that's when when you look at the values if we look at this value here you'll see that we have a contribution of around 0.23 three value wise on the red channel so that will be this value here we will have a contribution of 0.24 on the y-axis okay which more or less is more or less the same and we have a contribution of 0.39 on the z-axis so there's definitely an angle towards us okay so this will be the vertical portion or the vertical contribution on this axis hence the green color it's always red green and blue it's always x y and z so there will be that contribution on the y there will be a certain contribution on the x and there will be also a certain contribution in this case on the z and that's why we have a mix of all these colors if we have only contribution of one color there will be something only with one color and we're going to establish something here which is if the angle that this normal has with a certain axis if that angle is 90 degrees that contribution will be zero if it's zero degrees that contribution will be the maximum which will be one and if it's 180 degrees, 
it's going to be the opposite of 1, which is minus 1. Let me give you an example. If we have a vector that is right at the axis, like this, this vector will make 90 degrees with the x-axis and will make 90 degrees with the z-axis, right? So its contribution will be the maximum, because there's no angle between the actual vector and where it's seated in terms of where the uh, y-axis is. So it will have a maximum contribution on y, and the maximum we know that it's 1. So we know that on the y, which is a green channel, it will be 1. And it will have zero contribution on the x, because it makes 90 degrees and it will have a zero contribution on the z-axis because it's also 90 degrees if on the other hand the vector was here okay so if it was here it will be the same thing except contribution on the y will be minus one and the other ones will be still zero let's not forget that normals always vary between minus one and one that's the range of values that uh, they will have so this means that now we understand what normals are and maybe now that we know exactly what they are maybe there's a certain number of things that we can do with them and that's what we're going to take a look at if the world is our pivot point and by pivot point i mean it's our world axis and that's what i call pivot point what if we need or we would like to change the pivot point to be something else if we do that that means that we could access parts of the sphere that otherwise we won't be able to access for example the occluded part that we don't see how can we change the pivot point let's take a look at something so any object in the 3d space inside node will have of course a translation or rotation in scale same thing with the uniform scale skew and pivot and all that stuff but all these changes will be translated into something that is called the world matrix so the translation rotation in the scale will be also defined by a certain number in this 4x4 matrix. So if you go up, you'll see that this value here is changing. If you go up in this one, you'll see that this one will change. And if we go up and down with the Z, you'll see that what's defining the translation in this matrix, it's actually the last column. If we change things in the rotation, you'll see that a bunch of values will change because there are sines and cosines being uh, taken in consideration in all these variables in here in this part of this 3x3 three three matrix. So you'll see that this will change like that. So that means that the this 3x3 three three matrix will be the part of the matrix that will be defining the rotation on any object in space. And the last column will be the part of this 4x4 four four matrix that will be defining the translation. At the same time that we know this, there's a node called color matrix that I'm not going to get into what's the operations that it does. But if you take a look, there's some resemblance between these two. You can see that this part of the this matrix, okay, the world matrix, it's also a 3x3 three three in here. So that means that if we would like to change something color-wise, first of all, we have to have the reference in which there's no transformations at all this is called the identity matrix okay there will be no transformations if we have a value of one in its diagonal so now if you plug this here there will not be any changes okay if you don't have any any value you'll see that everything will be pretty much zero okay so you need to have a diagonal in order for us to be your starting point okay in the same way that if you open an axis or a card or anything that is a 3d object within the world matrix you also have one 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 so this is like the starting point to for you to do any transformations so because we have this thing in common we can link each element of this three by three portion of the matrix to this matrix in here if we do that we'll be able to change the rotation of our pivot point taking the translation rotation and scale in any way we like so this will be the representation of a 3d object in a 3d world and we can mimic that by changing the colors with the color matrix coming from a certain source in this case our normals so if we do that let's put this to zero 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 that will be the same diagonal in here so we're going to put the same values like this we have to copy one by one that means that now if you change something on the on the rotation on x for example we'll see that both values will change. So these values are going to be the same as these ones. Which means that in terms of the graphical representation, you see that this is the center of our world. And now if you change the axis, if you rotate it in the, in the x-axis, you'll see that this center is changing now. So you're now accessing what's happening below that region of our sphere. 
you can rotate it in any axis and you'll be able to access the portion of the image that otherwise or the normals that otherwise you won't be able to access you're effectively changing where your world space is so you're changing the pivot point to be something else okay so you're changing this in any direction you want so now the center it used to be here now it's already here so that means that if you flip between the channels you'll see that now you have a different type of selection where for example the blue used to be you know taking the whole region now it's not taking the whole region because now the center of our world is actually in here which means that this will be the maximum value in which we're going to have our vector coming from this direction this is for the rotation what about the translation we know that the translation lives in here so we can force something like this but because we don't have a 4x4 four four color matrix what we can have is a add node that we're going to open on all these channels so now if you link this to the red and this to the green and this to the blue there will be a translation so now this will also change in that regards so this will open a few more possibilities for you to do a more effective simple relining like this let's now take a look on our axis is influencing the pivot point of our selection in here okay this is the center of our world so this will take the values as we know it as as we saw before the more you go towards us the blue channel is changing slightly because you're effectively changing the axis towards us and it's because it's towards us we know that it's the z axis so everything else is going to be more towards the blue color if you go on the right you see that now the center used to be there okay so now we are looking past what used to be the center so now the center is off center actually same goes to the upward same thing it's as if your camera was moving but it's not so now if you rotate the same thing will happen you're rotating the world in which your reference was and this is actually what's happening just wanted to call your attention for something which is if you understand it better you can always change the polarity of both the color matrix and the add node by clicking the invert and then on the add node you're going to actually multiply this by minus one like that it's going to be the same you see that it's now moving in the way that you may find that probably would make a bit more sense to you but again it's exactly the same concept just a different direction so might change your way of uh, seeing things and that's why i want to give you this tip so hopefully this will now give you a few more ideas and overall understanding of what normals are and what type of manipulation we can do with them to our benefit especially in terms of but not only relighting let's not forget that even if you change the camera this won't change the values of the normals whatsoever because it's the normals of the world. We still have the same pivot point, which is the world in which the sphere is seated. So it's important to distinguish both things in order for you to fully understand this and hopefully you understood them now. Hello again, everyone. Hope you liked it. Um, just one thing, now that I was seeing this again, um, just to make sure that um, it was clear, when I'm drawing the coordinates, it's not the actual coordinates of the point, but rather the contribution, you can face it as a contribution in percentage since we're going uh, between minus one and one, of each angle that each, each axis will, will make to define a certain inclination of that vector. Uh, probably I will edit this later on uh, so it, it becomes a bit more clear because it's not the coordinates of the actual point but rather the contribution of the inclination of each axis. Hope that's, uh, that's, uh, that's clear now. Um, let's see, super cool stuff, cool, nice. Uh, hello Milos, I didn't know you were here. Cool, nice to see you, uh, virtually uh, of course. Um, time now to call our guests, I think just a tip every one of you i believe knows him okay so who would that be might not might not know him personally but uh, you've come across with this name i'm i'm pretty sure of it i'm pretty sure of it so let's uh let's call our guest now and uh see you in two seconds <laughs> Victor Paris, look at you, Hello. man. How you doing? <laughs> All good, Pedro. How All are good. you doing? How, how are you, man? All good. Uh, I'm seeing in your super enterprise. 
but we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about that uh in a minute <laughs> not just now uh because i'm sure a lot of people will have a lot of different uh questions for you uh, and i also have mine i have to say i have a huge list of questions so we'll see if we have time for for all of them <laughs> well, well once again thank you for doing this this actually uh i don't know if people are aware of this but this is actually uh your second live today in a row right because yeah. you, you you just came from one and you're about <laughs> to embark into another right yeah <laughs> but i love it i love it it's always oh man thank you so friend. so thank you so, so much of course thanks so for having me it's always no my pleasure. Th thank you thank you um actually um we don't know each other we never met each other uh before mm -hmm. we have some common friends but we never met yeah. each other which is yeah. uh which is cool uh so this is the first time <laughs> yeah yeah, so, yeah yeah but we are already friends so we are already yeah, friends exactly for sure. we exactly. get it along <laughs> <laughs> actually there's there's one person on the chat saying, ooh, look who he is. It's actually our common friend, which is uh, Carlos Conceição. Um, ah, Carlos! <laughs> hey, man! <laughs> I love, he's my brother. Yeah. <laughs> he, said, he said the same thing when I, when I was uh, talking uh, with him about you. He said, yeah, Victor is my brother uh, yeah. from a different mother, <laughs> of course. But, uh, and he said, hi, brother. Uh, so actually, uh, Carlos, as I, as I just mentioned, uh, is actually our common friend. And uh, and I'm well. Listen, we've we've uh, we've worked in the same companies, at least a couple of them. Uh, one of them yeah. being Dineg, and another one Cinesai. So I'm sure we have yeah. more friends in common that we actually know. Um, yeah. <laughs> and and after all, it's a small industry, right? Yeah. I mean, if you have been working in London for at least a year, we have something like a hundred friends together. Yeah. You can add you can add a zero after that one, and uh, that will make that will make the number of years that I've been in London for. <laughs> so yeah it's been around 10 years actually uh, yeah. uh as i said thank you once again victor for uh for this um for taking this uh this one also after the keen tools it was keen tools right um, it was keen tools yeah. yeah how was it by the way good oh amazing i love those guys really really fan of the of the work they are doing they are saving yeah. so much time and hassle for, you're right for man posting. you're right you're right you're right right <laughs> even though i'll be i have to be honest um, sometimes I still go on the old technique of uh, tracking and, uh, you know, the head myself with the generic mesh. Uh, mm -hmm. I still do it. I still do it, I have to be honest. I still do it. But without a doubt that they save a lot of time. No doubt. No yeah. doubt at all. No doubt at all. Yeah. <laughs> so, as I said in the beginning, I think everyone, pretty much, especially in the compositing, came across your name at some point in their careers, right? Whether they're just uh, newcomers or people that have been here for a few years. But for, mm -hmm. for those people that uh, they don't have a clue, which I find it really um, difficult to be honest, but for those people, <laughs> we have to address them. We have to address them, right? Can you present <laughs> yourself a bit better to everyone? Well, um, I have been a compositor kind of a, quite a few years. Um, most recently, I became a visual effects supervisor, so I have been supervising commercials and feature films, and now I'm evolving again into film directing because I'm now developing my first feature film as a film director after, you know, directing a couple of short films. My last short film was most basically on a new technology that is Echo. If you haven't seen it, it's yeah. uh, uh, com. And in there, you can see uh, we develop uh, a few technicalities to tell in a very complicated thing uh, for a very simple story. So, yeah, that is my life. It's overcomplicating things just to, get, to, to look like cool. <laughs> just for the sake of it, right? Yeah, that, that's that's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. So you worked in the in several uh, companies in London, but you're not in London at the moment, are you? No, no, no. I'm I'm living in the countryside in Italy, uh, quite near near Rome. And that is something that I always love. Uh, I was raised in the, in the countryside. So what I did is, uh, my wife is from Italy, so we moved here. And I built my, my studio here, so I can work like in any other major studio. So it was designed for, for visual effects supervision. So I can review, I have a cinema screen that is connected to, to the computers or a frame server. So I can actually have all the, you know, the comfortable of the big studio, at home. At home. So, that's, so, that yeah, sounds great, great man. That sounds great to me. And, and and I'm sure that sounds great for everybody that's that's watching. Oh yeah. I mean, Especially, do, do you want, I can show you just a bit. Yeah. It's not not much. Yeah, of course, but, yeah. Yeah, it's this this thing maybe let me let me show you. I can turn a bit. There is much. 
But well, is the, the most important part is right behind the camera. I would love to turn it, but it's is locked to the to the uh, to the monitor, so I cannot move the well. But the monitor, but people but, but people can uh, can actually um, see some pictures because uh, I think it was maybe a couple of weeks ago or something like that that you posted. No, it was actually more. It was in the beginning of this pandemic, right? Uh, yeah. And uh, you posted like um, some pictures uh, of, of your studio of that enterprise that you have there, and uh, yeah. LinkedIn went down almost because everybody was like, uh, you know, uh, drooling on uh, on that setup, right? <laughs> yeah, because it was quite convenient. The timing it was two days before the lockdown. The studio was finished, and I have been working on the studio for almost a year and a half. So it took me something like six months to okay. design every single piece that is in the in the studio from the, I mean, the cables, wiring, hardware, how to work everything together. Then it's, it's a it's a hybrid studio. So it's based on Windows and Mac and projections. And pff, so uh, it took me six months. And also the studio itself is like um, designed to, to work in both sides of the post-production for audio and for video, of course. And then it's Dolby Atmos. I have the ability to evaluate Dolby Vision and working with plenty of lights and buttons that I love that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, it was quite convenient, the timing. And then I have been, uh, you know, during the lockdown, having the time to familiarize with this because it's kind of a new environment and I'm so, so happy. I already had the Q, QC, uh, you know, for the quality control of a few a few things and is is to be honest is better than being at the cinema <laughs> <laughs> well it's your own cinema right it's yeah, your own exactly. cinema there so, you go of course you know, it has to be better i feel a bit of shame because everybody was complaining oh you cannot go to the cinema you are during the lockdown you cannot get out it's like i don't want to get out i have everything i need popcorns. you, you were I saying everything. i can i actually can listen don't say that too many times because otherwise you're gonna have a lot of people knocking on your door uh, uh, yeah, so. yeah, it's close it's close it's close don't come. <laughs> actually everybody's welcome whatever you want <laughs> uh -oh, uh oh you open that door now uh so mm, it's, it's on you now bring your own popcorn, bring your own popcorn. <laughs> at least at that least <laughs> oh, come on, and a, and a bottle of Prosecco, they can buy it there, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, you right? have $5,000 for, for a cup, <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, so this is where you are now, and we're going we're gonna to explore that. I would like to explore that a little bit better, but let's take a, a, maybe a step um, uh, back in terms of uh, where your career was in the beginning, uh, because some people, especially newcomers, they... They may they, they may think, well, well, what happened to this guy? How did he come up with all this thing in uh, you know in, in in all of a sudden? Um, you just mentioned the lockdown. Maybe some people are saying, well, he invested all this money in this lockdown and he put the, all this all this together in the lockdown uh, without uh, having like a, um, you know a path until you were able actually to reach where you are today. So yeah. you were working in in visual effects for quite some time in London, right? I think it yeah. was only in London, in Italy, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yeah, well, I, I wasn't, I have been living in London for eight years or, or so. I, I moved there in 2009. I was already working doing. Same time as me, more or less. Sorry? Same time as me, more or less. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and you know what? I hear about you many, many times because we have friends in common. Mm. Um, and the thing is, you always. You always keep an eye on everybody in the industry. You, you more or less you hear about that on this guy. So the people that is active, that is sharing things. So you always hear about that, and you have it on on your radar. But it, it happens a lot that I meet people like, yeah, we work together even in the same project. And it's like, oh, I'm sorry, I, I we never met. But of yeah. course, when I was working, when I started, I started a, in a, in London. Uh, at Union VFX, yeah. uh, that, that now is kind of a big thing. But I was the first, first artist ever in that company. Uh, and my no first way. task in the company was like, that is your desk. Let, help me, help me mount it. So it was an <laughs> IKEA desk, and I was seriously mounting the 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 desk with with Tim, the one of the owners, and I was working on 107, uh, 127 hours. Yeah, that was the, the the thing about the the guy who yeah. up the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was kind of an evolution of, hey, do you know another compositor? Yeah, I have another friend, so let's bring. And, and you know, in a very short time, something like four or five months, we were nine people, all friends, and yeah. we we crafted something like five hundred shots for the for the film. 
um, it is really cool because it was a very friendly environment. environment and yeah. it was, everybody was very humble. I mean, everybody was just bringing on the table wh whatever you have. And I'm so proud of them because after that, I just left because they they called me from, from Canada. Actually, it was a bit of time in, in Canada working for IMAX Corporation. Um, I was working in there for, uh, for Harry Potter. Um, and then I moved back to London to work on the same film in another <laughs> company. So I was working in Cineside for, for the same the same movie. Um, but I, I left, and I left the, the tra of course, I always been in, in touch with them, but I'm very proud of them because now they are a big deal. And the last time I was there, kind of I know, last year or something like that, they are, they are huge. Yeah. They are huge. So nice. So it's the same thing. Everybody has to start at a certain point. Yeah, so for me, course. it's kind of a metaphorical that I was mounting my own desk. And now those guys have like a full building full of people and many, many, many people that is very talented now. And it's like, now is the dream. That is the dream company that I wanted. And then, of course, I w always wanted to move to, to, other, to other places. But yeah, I started there. But before that, I was quite miserable just doing little things that i mean it's not like the super fashion and glamour films like you know the dark knight and the pirates of the caribbean and harry yeah. potter I was working in things that i mean well, it's things, not like yeah. a, a shame because yeah, of course there's stuff. nothing to be ashamed i don't think uh, and, that, I don't and i think that's a good message for people that possibly are watching us uh and yeah. they, they all want to work in these big productions uh and they end up like in the beginning uh, doing like small things as you are describing and the message here is everybody starts in the same way everybody starts from a junior position and everybody starts on small things uh, saving yeah. some saving some uh, exceptions of course but that's the norm so don't be disencouraged by by the fact that you are not working yet on big productions because as I Victor is saying everybody starting from the same place basically and to be honest with you pixels are always pixels so it is the same if you are working for Pirates of the Caribbean with Johnny Depp in your monitor or you are working with a B movie. Exactly. The notes are always the same. The techniques are the same. So you have to bring your your best in, in there. And it's always, you are always learning. And when they say, ah, but you have been working on big productions. You know what? The first day I'm starting a project, I'm always afraid. Oh my God, am I going to be good enough? Yeah. Everybody's much better than me because I really admire the people that I'm working with. Yeah. And I really respect every artist like yourself or many other people, even they are juniors. Everybody can teach you something. So this thing of, oh, I know everything. <laughs> if you believe that, that is a very grown thing I've, so you I've approached exactly I've approached exactly the same um, the same thing that you're saying uh, well I've been saying this from the beginning actually of this project you can learn with everybody no matter how experienced this person is you can learn with everybody and the point that you're referring that uh, you're always afraid or you can be always afraid of starting a new project that's actually true uh, not all the time but it happens and it's okay yep. that it happens it, it, it actually you know keeps you on your toes and makes you you know Delve into into learning new things, into uh, coming up with different solutions and studying because the study part of this profession never stops. So this is another message for for people that are uh, starting or or thinking on starting this profession. Uh, and this is actually something that I also mentioned on uh, Ben's McEwen um, uh, interview. You never stop learning. You never stop learning. So yeah. if you think that it comes to a point, as Victor just mentioned, exactly, I, I believe I phrase it very similarly. Actually, if you think it comes to a point in which you know everything, there's something fundamentally wrong with you, uh, yeah. because uh, this profession is all about learning. If not for anything else, technology is always advancing. So, and 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 the software companies they take that that you know development those developments in into their software as well. So, you have to be always up to to speed about what, what, what's happening, of course. Um, yeah. So. So that, that was your start in London and your start in VFX production. And, uh, and then you went to DNAG as well. And I believe DNAG was your last company before you decided uh, to embark on your solo adventure. Let's call it like that. Uh, how yeah. did that opportunity come about? And what were your struggles? Because a lot of people probably thought about the same. I want, I want to be a director or I want to be, you know, um, the master of my destiny. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, but some of people, some people probably will, um, will be afraid. They don't know where to start. 
they don't know if they have to have like a lot of money they don't know where to ask for support of several uh, kinds of support can be financial can be others um, contacts or whatever right can you can you expand a little bit on that all, all that journey um, started for you absolutely I mean for me the most difficult part was finding the time because that is the most important I mean it's the only thing you cannot buy exactly. because you can buy yeah. whatever you want at the time every day you have 24 hours and that is what you have and you have to get make the most of that and you know I just realized that I had to change the day my son was born. I was working on, on Batman uh, on the dark night. Um, and my son was born and I said, oh my, that this is a huge responsibility. And I was seeing myself, is this what I want to be? Because when you see that you have a son, you, you start feeling like, wow, responsibility. And you're, you feel like you are getting older very, very fast. Yeah, <laughs> of yeah, course, you're it's right. the same rate at school. But I've been I there, said, so I know what you mean. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, just so you know. So the thing is, like, I, I want to do this, and there is no other better time than now. So you either, I try for a few months just to be working during the day and then writing over, I mean, in the afternoons, evenings, and, and it's like, no, with this, this methodology is just taking me not to write or to allocate enough time to write the right way, or I'm just getting tired at work. So if I'm a compositor, I have to be a hundred percent compositor because I, it's the only way to be to be good yeah, is to, to be successful. Al allocate a hundred percent of yeah. yourself. The same thing applies for being a writer and a director. You you're writing hundred percent writer. You are directing hundred percent directing. So that took me to a position that I said, I have to quit because I have to try, and at least I'm going to give me a, a certain time frame. So I was using my savings. And of course, my family was always supporting me. And that was the reason I just decided to quit being a compositor. Um, and then from, from the neck, I said, OK, uh, that's it. For now, I'm not going to be a compositor. I'm going back to Italy. I have my house in there, which is this, and in the countryside, which is beautiful. And I can enjoy more. And the rhythm of the life is slower, so I can, I can have other things. And it took me something like, I'm not kidding, less than a week that they learned that I was in here and I was offered to supervise one of the most important uh, science fiction films in Italy for, for visual effects. And, and it was you. like, oh, yeah. And I couldn't say no because it's a part that I was in there. I have this, this, this defect, which is I love new things. <laughs> so I wanted to be a director, I wanted to be a writer, I wanted to be a visual effects supervisor, but you can only be one at the time. Yep. So I, was, I said, okay, I'm just going to take the time and I'm going to do this, this film and I want to do it as best as possible and I want to revolutionize the way they are doing the films here in, in Italy, which is also one of the most important cinematographies that, that is in, 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 in Europe, I will say, and in the world as well. So it's like, I can, I can make the difference in here. So, okay, I'm just going to leave my writing and directing because I'm interested in that. And I put myself 100%. And, you know, I won the, the Academy Award for, for that, the Italian Academy Award for, for the visual effects of that film, The Invisible Boy. And, and I was like, again, after I finished that, it's like, wow, this is really, really lovely. And, I lo and then they start offering me other yeah. things. The most difficult part in your career is say no. That is the most difficult, but it's the only way. And you in life, in life in general, not only your career, but yeah. in life in general, right? Yeah, because yeah. you have to, you cannot have everything. Because, of course, in the beginning, you can handle things that are small. But as soon as you grow up, and I mean, as a professional, things are going to get that massive that you, you have to choose. And the only way to choose is just to decline something in favor of other things. And I just realized that and I said, okay. Oh, Okay, I have to leave this thing, even if they offer me other projects that were amazing. But no, I want to believe in my film. That's why I built this studio, to work on my film in a certain way. And now I'm just all 100% writing and directing. And I'm so happy because I'm just working on my, on my own project. So what I believe is I have been helping directors for, for many years to bring their vision. So now I have learned so many things from many directors that now I can include that in my own tool set for, for telling my own story. So I'm just bringing all my experience in, in this. But right now, right now, I'm starting my career again because now I'm a, I'm a newcomer. It's like being a junior compositor. Exactly. But now I'm, 
Yeah. A, a junior director. So <laughs> exactly. Just yeah. Out my way. Yeah. That's it. But that's, that, but that's the exciting part, isn't it? It's like uh, you know, every every time either life throws something new at you, or you are proposing, you know, by yourself to try something new. I think that's exciting. You know, it can be. You know, yeah, you'll find your struggles, you'll find your difficulties, you'll find a moment sometimes of desperation, sometimes even. But I think there's always, if you stick to it, that there will always be something very good, hopefully, that will come out of it. Uh, and the world is filled with examples. You just mentioned your example. But people tend to think that this only happens to the ones that uh, were hit by the star of luck or something like that. And, uh, and it, it's all about work and it's all about as you just may pointed out you, yeah. may i tell you a story many people know this story because it's public but you know how i got to london i always wanted to go to london before going to london i always thought one day i'm going to london i'm going to do big things and i'm going to work in a batman movie and i want to work with christopher nolan all that uh, but i never took the courage because it's really difficult to leave your comfort zone and go there well you know what happens on Uh, April uh, 2009, a earthquake destroyed my house. I was about, I was about that to I'm mention that. Right now is what destroyed, completely destroyed. So I got in one night, in 22 seconds, a earthquake destroyed my whole life as I knew. And from that point, you know what? It was way easier to take decisions because you have nothing to lose. But For me, the real heroes, the real difficult heroes are not for me like that in the in the earthquake, losing everything and just whatever it takes. Yeah, you do it. You lose nothing. It's way more difficult now. That decision that I took a few months ago just to say, no, let's stop. Let's stop. Even you, if you have offers, let's stop that. So for everybody that is starting in there and you are in front of your computer right now watching and wondering, The most difficult part is just to leave your comfort zone and just to risk, but you have to be 100% in there. Just that, working your real, working whatever you do, your passion project. Echo for me was a passion project and I was nominated next to Steven Spielberg with a short film, the first time ever that a short film gets nominated in that in that category in the, in the Visual Effects Society Awards. So it's like, that is the only way. You have to dedicate yourself to something 100%. If you are in there, you arrive to the stars every single time because it's just as any, anything else. It's just how much time are you going to allocate to that? Well, times is equals to work. So at the end, exactly. everybody can do anything. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, and sometimes I even you know, stop myself of saying certain things um, in a similar way that you're saying, because of course we have also to take in consideration people that they don't really have a choice or, or the, the possibility of either studying more because they have a, you know, a, a family that is too big and they don't have any time, but that's the minority, let's be honest, that's the minority. The great majority of the people, they all have these big um, hopes and dreams and things that they would like to do, but they don't do it purely the great majority of the times, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna underline this, I'm saving some of the some other situations, of course, that sometimes are dramatic even. Uh, but yeah. saving those, the great majority of the people, they don't pursue more for because of pure laziness or yeah. pure procrastination. And yeah. this is and what you just described, and you can uh, everybody that would like to know more about that story that Victor uh, just uh, mentioned now, you can uh, watch Victor's TED talk. Uh, I think he was in Italy, right? Yeah. 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 So Sometimes that's what it takes. It takes something, uh, life uh, throws something at you that you were not expecting, like an earthquake. Nobody expects an earthquake, of course. It's impossible to predict even. Uh, the, time, the scientists yeah. cannot do it. Uh, yeah. So nobody can do it. But there's a parallelism, and this is what, uh, what I would like to talk to you, which is that moment in your life with the current situation that we are living in. It's not the same. Of course, because of course that hit you, uh, you know, particularly um, yeah. hard, uh, and yeah. it happened with just a few uh, hundreds of people, or maybe thousands. But it was not the yeah. entire world, and in this case, it's the entire world. But the, yeah. the, the 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 fact of the matter remains, which is this is an opportunity. I really believe that this is an opportunity, and I've Absolutely. been saying this from the very beginning of this show, 
and actually coming, you know, having you on the show, I knew that you would uh, you would say something like that. And uh, and for everyone that is watching, I cannot stress this point enough. This is your time. This is the time for you to develop new things because the world hit the pause button. So you your life is pretty much stopped in in a lot of situations, in a lot of cases um, worldwide. So it's time to develop new things. Uh, of yeah. course, that comes with uh, really hard work. It comes with a lot of. Uh, uh, sacrifices as well, uh, especially this time, this point in time. Uh, this is so weird what's happening in the world that, of course, our minds are sometimes like all over the place. But it's totally possible, and I really believe that this is the time uh, for for us to do that. Uh, procrastination. It's something that is a very human thing to do, but it's it's really what stops you uh, and what stops everybody. Uh, and let's face it, a lot of people, and we've all been there. So we all. Uh, yeah. we're all the, the same people to blame and we are sinners as well in that case yeah. we all have our our you know um, laziness moments which is okay as long as they don't overtake the other parts of your of the things that you want to do right yeah absolutely yeah. i mean procrastination is the consequence for me of not enough motivation so when you are not doing Uh oh, hello. But goals. Victor. working so hard just because I want to get the best shot in history of compositing <laughs> because I want to get there. I want them to, to acknowledge that, oh my God, this is the best shot composite in the world. But at the end, when you get there, it's like, yeah, there are normal people like everybody exactly. else. Exactly. Very nice people. But and, and then you don't see yourself grow up because it's like looking at yourself in the mirror and say, oh, my hair is not growing. Well, no, it's not that. It's like it, you are adapting to your own, but you need to always have dreams and have goals. If you don't have goals, you are going to procrastinate because you don't know where you want to go. So for me, the procrastination is just something very natural, which is a story of my life. Let's be clear <laughs> with that. Um, but you always have to look at something and look at yourself and say, where do you want to be? And you know that every minute you are expending, that is not never come back. That is something that for me terrifies me. Every hour that I'm losing same my Same life. here, same here. Especially in this, in this, uh, with this pandemic, I have so many things that I want to do, so many things and so little time. And plus I have a kid, as, as you just mentioned, you also have a kid uh, that is, yeah. uh, I'm sure it's, uh, it is, is young, right? Uh, it's, yeah, it's it's, eight. It's eight. So, so there you go. My, mine is almost four. So they take a lot of our attention and um, we love them. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, we have so much things that we want to do that I find myself working hours on end during the night uh, because that's the only time that I have th th that I can do yeah. that. But at the same time, <laughs> there's a lot of other a lot of other days in which I'm so tired, you know, because a whole day has passed. I, w I woke up because I have a, a small uh, kid. I woke up really early in the morning. I had this whole thing going on in my life. And then by the time that I'm about to, to do something, I'm so tired and it's okay. As long as you don't miss the point, you, yeah. you will compensate later on. It's okay. But procrastination just for the sake of it, it will destroy your dreams and you will destroy everything. One thing that I would like also to, to mention um, is uh, a few, I think it was maybe last year, you, um, you did a talk uh, with Foundry about uh, VFX supervision, actually. So now mm -hmm. we, we jumped from, from that moment in time of your life, from being a VFX uh, compositor for now being, a, a, well, embark on, on that new um, direction, which is a VFX supervision and direction. And, um, and uh, you were saying that one of the most important things, which ties in with, with the conversation that we were having, is being prepared. And, yeah. uh, and, and being prepared also, it's uh, also, I believe, what uh, makes uh, something that it's going to be good luck or bad luck. Because I, 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 I strongly believe that, and I, I think I've said this before here in this, in this um, show, which is good luck, it's the combination of preparation and opportunity. If you don't have one of these two variables, 
the good luck will turn out to be bad luck. And, yeah. and, and the, with a bad luck like this, chances are probably they will not, you know, the train will not pass again uh, in the same station. So probably you miss that train. Um, yeah. uh, and, and it's so important to be prepared, isn't it, for everything that you, you're about to do in life. Because, you know, the opportunities come up, you never know when they will show up. But as long as you're prepared, they will be yours. Do you want to expand yeah. on that? You know, in every minute of your career, whatever the role you are doing, you are taking decisions and you are making your decision on the way. So the more prepared you are, you are going, there is no, I mean, there is no flat line when you are building your career. There are two directions. You can go up, that means you are prepared and you are growing with your confidence and you are helping others and you are going up or you're going down. And going down means that the director asks you questions that you have no answer or you cannot search for the answer in the time frame that you need to, re to respond. Or So the preparation is like to anticipate the moment just to earn time. So it's as, as I said before, it's all about time. So what you are doing in your preparation is just buying you yourself time for when the, the questions arrive, you need to have several answers not one answer, because your answer is going to depend on what you find. So when you are, I mean, the difference between a visual effects supervisor with a lot of experience and one without experience is that one has a lot of experience in getting mistakes. So you are an specialist in error. Why? Because you make yourself your own mistakes. So when you have a mistake, you are going down. But once you are going down because of that mistake, you will never go down again. So that means that you, the next time you are going up. So making, making mistakes is part, of the, is part of the game, but it doesn't mean that you don't need to worry about that. It's like, uh, it, you, can, you cannot predict something that you don't understand. And for understanding things, well, you have to get on the field. So sometimes I have to admit that sometimes I, I make mistakes and it's like you feel so ashamed, so terrible and so miserable. But you need to understand that it's part of the game. Of and course. it's like next next time you are never going to make the same mistakes. Or oh, that is the I mean, that is the intention. <laughs> of but, course, of but, course. But that is as the long thing as you is, learn as, as long as you learn with the mistakes, you're already growing. Uh, right, exactly. Um, because exactly. making the and same mistake twice—that means something, uh, you know, didn't go well within your mind. You, you really didn't get it. Uh, yeah, so, there is yeah, no totally. shame. There is, everybody has mistakes, and and who thinks the contrary is just silly. So of course, but the thing is, you are every time you are making a mistake, you are being better the next time. Of course. Try not to make a critical mistake that is going to compromise everybody else. So that's why you need to get prepared. So you you have to aim for the best and prepare for the worst. So there that is go. the philosophy. Amen to, <laughs> amen to that, as the, American, <laughs> as the Americans say, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, you just mentioned in the very beginning, of course, because it's obvious you are in this uh, huge uh, studio that is yours now. And congratulations for that, by the way. Um, uh, and you posted some photos of it. Again, everybody that just joined, you, uh, joined us uh, recently, you can, you can uh, check uh, Victor's. Uh, I think you have uh, an article also on um, escape. Um, technologies, yeah. right? Escape technology and also AIDSO, and now we are going to have. I mean, I, I didn't have any idea that everybody was going to get so excited, and everything started because I just post a, a picture of my desk, and and someone said, "Oh, you have three monitors," and I said, like, "What? No, no, no! I have a screen, <laughs> a, a cinema screen, IMAX technology screen. So that is the important part. So there, I was taking photos, and then I put it on on Instagram, and I got like, wow." Yeah a lot of responses so yeah so yeah, people I'm can check it of yeah of course of course and you should of course uh, everybody <laughs> would like to have a piece like a, a square inch of, of what you have there uh, I, i'm pretty sure <laughs> so uh good for you man good for you uh, i like that and um speaking of, of of that um you now have your own studio you have you have your own suite and we are leaving this pandemic thing right which uh, forced everybody to work from home um and uh you are doing that as well, of course, the, the, you know, yeah. <laughs> like everybody else, right? You're not like different. everybody else. Uh, yeah. But uh, from your experience now as a director, uh, because you, you are actively on the field, where do you see uh, the industry going in terms of this, um, 
you know, on one hand, new technologies that uh, will require, uh, you know, different approaches on set and different approaches on post-production as well. And, um, and one of the things that definitely I think, I believe it will change because there's no choice now. It's the, the working from home or working remotely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it will be great to, 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 to hear your take on, uh, on what you see coming um, in our industry towards that uh, side of things. Well, you know what? Before we were talking about opportunities, so every crisis, any moment of crisis is a moment of opportunity. Well, you know what? When I was, I mean, 10 years ago, not that far, 10 years ago, if you wanted to work on a huge blockbuster, you have to go either to Vancouver or to London or one of those uh, production hubs, centers, cities. Now you have the opportunity to work on those from anywhere, literally anywhere in the world. And that is going to give you the opportunity of have a better life. And not because I'm London, I still have my, my apartment in London and I love that city. But the amount of time that I spend going to work in London is just, 45 minutes to go, 45 minutes to come, and then eating outside. And then while, I'm, I mean, I really love f working from home. I have been doing that many years ago, even before going to London. And the thing is now, the time that I spend from the kitchen of my, of my house to my studio <laughs> is less than a minute. <laughs> and every time that I want to have a break, I go into my house that takes me 30 seconds because I'm, I need it. Yeah. Um, you know, and sometimes it's like, so I have another another rhythm in my life. I don't need to be in those centers. And another thing is like, anybody can work from anywhere, which means you don't need to make that. That is a real sacrifice to leave your own culture, your own country. I mean, you did it as well yeah. uh, as, as I did. Yeah. And you have to leave your own space just to go and pursue for your own dreams. And once you do the dream, is like, yeah, but I'm missing home. Yeah. I'm missing my, my friends in there and I'm missing my place. So you have to decide one or the other. And I'm not even talking about, you know, women who wants to have a family that they have more limitation than us. So this is going to democratize talent. And that is the most important part because we, we have been living in a world that technology is democratized. Everybody can have a computer that can do anything. But now we are democratizing now talent. talent so talent exactly. can be, you know, it's like ratatouille. Anybody can cook. So now anybody can comp. Anybody can do 3D. Anybody can do animation. Of course, it's not that easy because you need to require the, the requirement and you need the training. But what I mean is like talent can be anywhere in the world yeah. right now. And, so, and, and also the, the mental health issue, because uh, as I just um, alluded uh, before, um, you know, sacrificing family, uh, friends, your life in a, in, that, that you had before just to pursue your dreams, which is a very noble thing to do. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Uh, I did it and I already worked in three or four different continents. So, and, and, and I believe there's very good things uh, that comes with it as well. But it comes to a point in which you should be able to decide. And uh, I don't see the reason because the technology, I mean, it's 2020, come on. Uh, yeah. Everybody knows that it's possible. So I think what was stopping uh, people from doing that is actually the studios. And it's from, uh, I believe, and I'm going to say it, it's a false sense of security because yeah. banks have been doing, you know, in huge transactions anywhere in the world and yeah. if if there's you know something that is really you know personal and needs to be really needs to be really protected the banking industry it's amongst one of the top ones of course yeah. you know film industry of course it has to be protected as well like any industry but the technology is there so i, I never really understood um why is that and i think this is as you just mentioned as well this may be an opportunity for things to change because now the door was forced to be open and it's going to be very difficult to close it again because yeah. it's been proven that it's it can work there's no issues in terms of security there's no issues in terms of uh, you know uh, leaks of uh, intellectual property or anything like that uh, yeah. and it's the same thing so uh, and again on the mental issue there, there are dramatic situations, and I, and, and I've, I've, we all heard, uh, you know, different stories in our lives. Yeah. People are commuting every, every week to go 
from different countries. I mean, this is crazy to me. You know what I mean? So yeah. th they will take a toll on your mental health. They will take yeah. a toll on your mental family, uh, on your uh, family life, which is related with your mental health. So yeah. I, I don't see the point. And we, we've all uh, seen this um, uh, polling a uh, few months ago that 90% or something crazy like that of uh, professionals on post-production suffer from uh, some, some, some sort of uh, mental anxiety, disorder. Anxiety. Anxiety and, and all that yeah, stuff. Distress in general. And, and yeah. this doesn't help, you know what I mean? So I think this will open a huge opportunity in this case. But that's why I would like to, to hear your, your take on it because now you are on the other side of the equation which is you deal with the studios, you, we deal with the people that put the money into productions and uh, it will be great to, to know, as you just mentioned, like what, what's, what's their take on or, or, or what's their worries now that this, op this door has been open, what's the worry or what was the worry all about, you know what I mean? It's, it's being proven that there's nothing to be worried about. Uh, yeah, as you said, it's all about the security. It's what's going to happen with the data? What's going to happen with the data? Well, you know what? If I am at double negative, and I take my phone and I just take a picture of the of the screen exactly. and I post it on my Facebook, I can do that, and nobody can stop me. But you know what? That is a suicide. It's a professional suicide because I'm just going to just to share what and just to spoil the film, yeah. what I'm getting from that. So if you are a serious person, you are not going to do that either at work or at your own place. Of course, you need to improve your, the, the security because of course, if someone enters in your house and they steal the data, yeah, it's not your direct responsibility, but you are responsible for that. So we need to find ways to improve that security. For instance, my, my, my data, when I'm storing the data, is either on a safe or in the cloud. So it's not in here. So the cloud has a 256 uh, characters uh, chain. Of, of password. So I don't even remember. It's in, a, it's in an encrypt yeah. with the biometric uh, password. So I cannot, I mean, nobody can, stay. of course, if they remove my thumb, they have it, but they can have the same thing. I of can course. lose my badge. Uh, you know, if I leave my badge, I'm it's exactly the same thing. It's a false sense of security. It's it's it's, uh, it's all all that is. It's all that is. And 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 you just mentioned anybody can take a picture on their monitors while they are in in the, the company. And we, <laughs> for those of, of us that have been in the industry for quite a, some years, we all heard these stories, and people were persecuted by that, and they were blacklisted from the industry. Obviously, right? It's obvious yeah. that, that 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 can happen anywhere. Even even if you're in the most secure place, because you have your phone with you, you know what I mean. So uh, that is maybe what we need is like a watchdog or a new figure, a professional figure that is someone that is going to travel around the world just to ensure that the environment of that artist is certified safe or to create. A, so yeah, it's another another improvement for the industry. Yeah, it's something new. We are not used to this and it needs to be built, you know, while you need things. So it's a natural evolvement of the situation. Of but course. for sure, this is an evolution and you cannot stop the evolution. First of all, because working from home, let's face it, it's going to be cheaper for the companies oh. because they don't have to pay for the space. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Soho in London is the most expensive place in Europe. Yeah. So having an office in there is so expensive. While, for instance, when I was working in Echo, I, I produce Echo um, myself. So I was working with people in Argentina, Canada, US, France, UK, and I don't care about the hours they do. It's like, okay, I'm giving you this task. When can you do that? Oh, okay, yeah, give me a week. And in a week, if you have serious people working with you, in a week you have it. And I don't care if they have been working 24 seven or they did it in the last hour before the delivery. I seriously don't care. So this is what we need. If what the companies maybe want is just to, ah, I need to keep you accountable. You know what? That is also fake because I have seen, and you have seen for sure, people on Facebook, on the companies, are spending a lot of time maybe watching videos or whatever, oh, instead of doing their the own time, thing. All the time, all so the time, man. So this is what I mean is, what are we talking about? Professionals yeah. are professionals in the office or at home. The people that is wasting time is going to waste it the other way. Of course, less the acknowledgement is like at home, you have more temptation. But if you are used to that, 
that is not a problem. It's like, yeah, I'm going, instead of working from, because this is the story of my life, I really like to, to wake up very, very early in the morning, sometimes at five, six. I work a lot in the mornings because I'm very productive. So I, maybe I prefer by- mornings as well, exactly for the same reason. I'm, I'm more productive in the morning. There's less distractions. Uh, in, yeah. in the summer, for example, which is the time that we are approaching, it's less hot. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so I started yeah. maybe at six. At no, I, I don't. I don't go to that length. All right. I, I don't. I don't wake up at five. No, I did <laughs> that when my son was very, very little, and that was enough for for because I did that for many me, months. <laughs> you know, for me, it was exactly because of my son because I was putting him to sleep, and then I was getting asleep with him. So I was going to sleep something like nine or eight thirty. So at three in the night, I was like, oh, I, can, I cannot sleep anymore. <laughs> so, so I woke okay, up got and, it. and I was getting that rhythm, and that was so nice. So when I arrive at noon, I'm already done with my day. So I have the you know the rest of my day for doing other things. We'll do other things, so yeah. You, you have more flexibility, and I really believe. We need to be more responsible, both sides. So we need to demonstrate that it is possible. But this moment of change, that is when we are going to demonstrate that this is possible. And it needs to be from both sides, the companies that are going to trust us with that and the professionals that are going to be working. For me, working from this environment, you have no idea how productive can be one of hour course. in here. It's like, I have everything. I'm going to dailies and for me, going to dailies is this. Okay, it's fine. It's working. That's it because I have the screen in there. I don't need to go and go into a corridor and book the the screening room and oh no, I have to wait an hour. What, what can I do? So no, in here I have like I need to check a pixel in the big screen. I'm going there. Okay, I have it. I check it here. So everything is in my environment. Of course, in mine has been designed specifically for that. But I designed this before the pandemic. I designed this to work from home better than working at the studio. And now I'm using that for my own production. So no better. I mean, I seriously don't care for something more than for my own project because it's my own project. So I want to spend my money the wisest. Wisely, (laughs) yeah, of course. Of of the ways. But in here, it's just like a dream come true. And when I'm working with other artists, if they ask me, can I work at your studio and I have uh, the space available? Yeah, of course. But if they ask me, right now I have an editor that is working with me and, and she told me, I prefer to work from home if you don't mind. I said, no, absolutely not. I don't mm-hmm. want to have you here because I, I like to have my own my own environment. So if you want to come, you have your own your own place. But if you want to work from home, I mean, you are super welcome. So she's productive. I see that she's working sometimes very late in the evening or in the night. But who cares, uh, right? As long as they meet the deadline, yeah, that's all we care she about, I'm sure. always delivered yeah. like sharp uh, uh, every time. And that is, I mean... What can I ask more from, exactly. from, from that? I'm totally, totally with you on that. Actually, uh, there was a point uh, that I was about to, to ask your opinion on, uh, and then I forgot. And then your brother from a different mother is uh, reminding us on the chat, which is, what about the rebates? Uh, which is, uh, of course, a, a big part of the equation. Uh, and the reason why um, you know companies are in this country or that country on this continent on that continent it's purely because of tax rebates. So there's yeah. there's still a huge and balanced uh, part of the um, I would say business model that is still really really heavily relying on the tax rebates for it to work. How do you see that? And uh, what's your take on it? Um, I'm going to say something that I don't necessarily share. The, the enthusiasm about that, but it's like, I'm going to make a situation, which is, if I want to get the tax rebate in Canada, and I'm not sitting any company specifically, it's just general talking. So if I need, uh, imagine that Canada is giving you a certain rebate because you post produce your film in there. So imagine that you get a computer, you open an office in Canada, somewhere in Canada, you open an office. But if you in there, you put a computer with your frames, with your software, with everything. And then I'm going to, I don't know, Germany, because I love the life in Germany. And then from Germany, I'm connecting remotely to my computer that is in Canada. The question is, where is the, where is the work done? Is done in Germany 
or is done in Canada. But I think that's part of the problem these days because, for example, uh, and, and I'm speculating a little bit because I, do, I don't know this 100%, to be honest, but part of the reason why some countries, including the UK, is, um, you know, people, of course, they need to work from home, but they need to, to be in the country. I'm sure it's because that's the, like, the trade-off of the tax rebates like you have to have people working on the country to spend money and contributing tax to taxes for the country which makes sense uh, on itself right uh, yeah. but at the same time that this happens there are other companies in other um, uh, countries they they allow people to work from home despite of where they are so i don't really get it i don't really get the logic here to be honest with you so that is the theme is there is a bit of blanks yeah. Still, because this is actually very new. So I don't think the world is prepared for all this philosophy of, uh, so what is going on? So is the film, as, as I said in the example, is the film actually produced in Germany because I'm handling the computer that is in Canada from, but, or, or is in Canada. But what is the, co where is the coming, from? Yeah. the money coming from? That is the question. Is is coming from Canada? Because is if coming from Canada, you are paying your taxes in Canada, it makes sense. But if it is, if you are paying from Germany with a computer, so there is a yeah. lot of, it's a like, lot of yeah. unclear things in here. Yeah, it's uncharted so, territory. So of course, uh, yeah. I understand that companies and studios and, and you know, whoever uh, has the money to invest in these projects, uh, it's, it's, they're still figuring out, I believe. But I don't think uh, they're turning back, uh, honestly. Now yeah. that this door uh, has been opened, I think uh, it's here to stay, honestly. Um, yeah. All right, cool. Uh, guys, do you have any, any final question be before we go to the note fight? Because everybody's asking for the note fight now. <laughs> uh, if you have if you have a any other questions please do it now otherwise we're going to move really quickly because it's been or, over an hour uh today uh, with victor which is always a good thing uh but um if you if people are okay note fight everybody's asking asking for the note fight nobody has any more questions for you victor so uh should we do it let's do it let's do it then all right note fight All right, you ready? Let's do it. All right. Reflections. Uh, shader. <laughs> re re reflections. Basic material. The whole is, is specularity. No, no shininess at all. No diffuse. No, any anything of, of, of that. It's just a specularity. Cool. Next one, Additive King, favorite process. Sorry? Additive King. Additive King? Yeah. Um, well, that, 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 that is for... for uh, adi uh, <laughs> minus, uh, uh, IBK color, minus the, 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 the blade with the color, with, with the green screen, and then plus and on the background. A bit of roto in um, and masking and things. <laughs> All right. Favorite gear? Sorry? Favorite gear. Favorite gears. Uh, uh, that is like, did you love more mom or dad? No <laughs> way. Um, okay, key light. Key light. I'm with you on that. Uh, glow. <laughs> glow. I do have. It's just a bit of blur and a bit of plus. That's it. That's it. That's how a glow actually works, actually. <laughs> uh, crowds. Crowds. Um, I don't touch those things. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Uh, just cards. Laying out cards. Uh, so pr I prefer to have the singular elements of the crowds shooting on, on, on blue screen or green screen and then laying every car, uh, even procedurally, but just I prefer to have everything looking at the camera with the look at um, 3D space. Cards looking at 3D space and faking the shadows. That cool. is the best way. Nice. Uh, this is kind of a favorite one of the public. So I'm gonna, I'm, it's, a, it's kind of a curveball, all right? But I'm gonna ask you, fake subsurface. Blur, that is a, a, a blur thing. I am um, a blur with a, um, a road. 
and a color, a lot of color in there. And I always do that. When, right. I mean, to improve. <laughs> so when you get the road and the blood, you always look like something in there. By the by the way, the road, the best for, for this is like the, the one, the procedural one, not the filter. The other, the dilate road um, that behaves like a like, like a blow. Uh, let me let me. Like I can a, with the Gaussian that. with the Gaussian filter. Uh, is the blur a road blur? I road blur. All right. Okay, last one. All right. Yeah. Volumetrics. Oh, God race all the way. All I the way. On. <laughs> all the way. God God volume race. I, I would say, but I prefer even the the God race because I can paint things that are not in the, in the show so yeah i can create rays that are not even and i can fake that even when it looks like 3d faking a lot i love to fake things into d i'm so dirty cool nice nice one man we did the round 10 i believe uh, or even more than that <laughs> and people are, are loving it <laughs> did you like that <laughs> I love it, I love it. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> Especially the dirty part, people are referring yeah. so dirty. <laughs> yeah, I'm tending, I'm always tending to the 2D take on, on, on every task. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, faking things is actually what uh, what we do all the time, right? Yeah. If you want it things to be... Work. Exactly, if you want things to be like really precise, ask your fellow um, uh, artists from the 3D side, because as compositors we are always faking things. Uh, yeah. for the benefit of selling the shot, that's it. Uh, that's what we do. And uh, actually on the tech corner, a lot of times that uh, that I, uh, you know, giving tips and tricks is all about faking things. Um, oh, yeah. And that's it, that's 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 what we do, I guess. Uh, yeah. Once again, Victor, thank you, thank you so much. I think it was a really nice one. Uh, people seem to enjoy it as well. Let's see if uh, everybody's uh, laughing, saying so good. Um, a lot of good things happening here on the chat. So if everybody wants to ask a final question to Victor, this is the time, because let's face it, this guy must be exhausted. The, I, I don't know, ah, you've, no, been, you've been, you've been, uh, let's be honest, you've been, you've been talking for about maybe three hours, if not more, right? Uh, I love attention, so no worries. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Cool. Uh, Carlos, your 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 brother is saying that he could stay here all night, as if he Me doesn't, too. as a, as if he doesn't is is not um, all night uh, working or doing whatever. <laughs> God knows what. Anyway, yeah. uh, maybe we see each other in Lisbon one of these days, man. We'll see. I would love to. I yeah, would we'll love see. to. You've and I have to go to Portugal, but I love that country. I really love Lisbon. Listen, I really like Italy as well, uh, and I'm and I'm not I'm not saying this just because you're here. Uh, people that are in this chat, some of them I know personally. They know what I'm what I'm saying because I always say next time I go to a different country in Europe, it's going to be Italy. Um, because I'm always I love welcome it. here. Let's watch <laughs> All right, thank you. Bring the popcorn. <laughs> I'll bring the popcorn. All right, I'll, I'll bring yeah. the popcorn. All right, man. So one final question, uh, Victor, do you need help? <laughs> Psychological help for sure. <laughs> oh, man. Well, probably, probably I'm going to, and you know, I'm not, I mean, I'm not a company creating visual effects, but I'm always doing things for, for, um, I mean, for doing my tests and things. And I always get uh, fresh people. I like to, to get even to help people to, to grow. So just stay tuned. I'm always posting some, something related in my LinkedIn. So you can just go to my page that is, uh, www.victorperez.co.uk and in there you can find all my social media if you follow sometimes i'm posting uh if you openings or or whatever so let's see let's cool. see uh once again guys uh i've mentioned here when we, we were uh, talking with each other a uh, few talks that victor uh did uh one of them recently the other one uh, has some some years uh, both of them are available on YouTube, so check them out. I'll be posting them, uh, the link on the comments as well after the live. But if you're looking for inspiration in difficult times, I think the TED Talk can uh, can be a good one for you because, um, yeah, it's when you face difficult times that uh, you see yourself um, obliged to, to respond. Uh, and I've been saying this from the very beginning, we are living a moment like that, so don't lose sight of, uh, of, of that, please, uh, for your own benefit. All right, Victor, thank you once again. Uh, please stay thank on you. so we can have a chat afterwards.
guys that's the benefit of uh, being the host of the show all right <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> but guys see you next uh, next week and uh i'll be posting uh next week sometime next week when the the, the, the next one will be but stay on all right bye bye see you thank you